small little envelope has arrived from Croatia and in it we should have a very impressive socket 775 chip. Let's unwrap it. Voila! Uh, this is probably not the most uh, static electricity safe packaging you can imagine but I paid three dollars I think three or four dollars for this so I cannot complain about anything and there we have the 775 uh, contacts and on the front well it's quite difficult to read on this angle almost impossible but you might just make out that it says Pentium D and the model number I not sure I can read but it is Pentium D nine four something I'm not, I'm not sure what I can't remember but I think it's a 3.4 gigahertz dual core Pentium 4 and it has two 65 nanometer uh, Pentium cores underneath the slid in uh, multi-chip package basically if you remove this lid underneath you will see two physical die 65 nanometer die and uh, they are sort of networked together it's quite similar to what you get with the multi-core uh, AMD EPIC processors these days but this was the first or one of the first multi-chip uh, MCM uh, multi-chip module type uh, CPUs I think at least for the general public consumer market but the problem with this is that right now I don't have any uh, working 775 board to put this beauty in so this one it's just dead I think it's it has repairs on it on the for the caps somewhere but it's completely dead it does have a good unmolested socket this one doesn't have a chipset uh, that supports dual core Pentiums. It's a 775 but an old one. I think it doesn't even have a proper AGP slot. It has just these contact points. I have another one here. Um, it does support dual core but it doesn't have a good socket. Uh, I could risk it and try to try to see if it works but I don't think it even boots I think it failed to boot with this Celeron here I was trying to get it running and another one here with a bad socket again and another one here this is a Lenovo OEM uh, box but these ones were notorious for failing caps and you can see near the PCI Express slot there's one that's obviously buffed up and these two also and it kind of boot it, it does post uh, the bias works 
I can get it to um, almost boot operating systems, but clearly the caps are the issue here. So I, I don't have any 775 boards in good condition at the moment, which is a damn shame because I was really looking forward to building a dual Pentium 4 system. Not really dual, but uh, dual, not dual socket, but dual core. This chip is rated, I think, at 95 watts. That's quite optimistic. The biggest problem with these was that, uh, not the maximum rating, they were 95 watts or 120 watts. The biggest problem was that at idle they were using a lot of power compared to Core 2 Duos. So that was the always the problem with Pentium 4 architecture, but this is the last array for the netburst. And uh, if you've seen my previous videos, I have a uh, one which I called the Netburst Beast, which was just a Prescott single core. This is a uh, Sutter Mill, two Sutter Mill 65 nanometer cores on a chip. So it's twice the CPUs basically, and uh, die shrink as well. So this will be my Netburst Beast 2.0 build. I just have to get a, find a motherboard somewhere or I can try to repair the Lenovo board by replacing the caps. But that's quite a hassle. Either that or I will have to spend a million dollars and get a brand new 7.7 board. They are all getting quite expensive on eBay and everywhere, but we'll see.